Yo. Hey, Maddie. What's what going up? on? Oh, thanks for What's doing good? it. How you doing? Man? I'm yeah. good. I'm good. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Stevie. Uh, all right. Um, first off, I wanted to say I, I, I didn't get a chance to meet you. Um, my band was playing in Hawaii, and uh, they met you at the Ruka Surf House. Yeah, dude, you you played my restaurant years ago. Really? Yeah, they, like you guys, you guys came in. You played the oh. basement in Toronto. In Toronto, that was your place. Yeah. Oh my god! You guys have the video when you guys played that basement. Yeah, that was in that the was basement of my rest. It was a great show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Money Mark. Yeah, that, we were just talking about that. Um. I just watched the uh, Tyson fight at uh, my friends and uh, Money Mark showed me pictures of you. And I'm like, oh man, like I wish, uh, this was a, in Hawaii though. You're, you could- yeah, I remember that. I remember, yeah. I, I remember that as well. Like, um, dude, I was cooking a fucking pig. I was, I was cooking a bunch of food Yeah. And, and Dave shows up and he starts taking photos in front of this pig. Everyone's acting like he cooked the fucking pig. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I was really jealous because um, like um, I, I got, you know, just to let you know, I got food poisoning in Hawaii. Yeah, that happens. That happens. Yeah, that's why I couldn't make it. I uh, ate. Um, do you know what, what you a eat? moco loco, a loco a moco? Um, was it, it was like spam beef, and rice? It was a beef patty with gravy and an egg on it. Oh, and, yeah. And, and so that gave you I, a little bit of jippy tummy. It gave you the shit. Yeah, I got really sick. Yeah, that don't happen. So, but I saw the pictures, um, and I'm like, man, I missed out on that. Yeah, it was a good time. Like Hawaii is always a nice time unless you get food poisoning. But it's like right, right. Um, let's go back to so you're originally from Canada. Yeah, I'm in Canada. Yeah. And then how did you get your start? Like, how did you get involved with cooking and, and all that? Oh, um, how did I, I, I guess it was like, I was like a shitbag kid in high school and I, I wasn't able to get into any colleges or universities and, yeah. and any, anybody can get into culinary school if you just pay. Yeah. You know? So I guess my parents had enough money to pay for my ass to go to culinary school. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I went to culinary school in like 2000 um in toronto and and then and 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 then i dropped out of culinary i did like two years at, in culinary school yeah and 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 was really good at it but um you know it's like one of those things where i never thought i would i never thought i would fucking uh you know i just wanted to go to toronto i just i'm from a small town i just wanted to go to the city and yeah. like you know go to go to college and do drugs and get fucked up and like you know uh the the way of getting to that place was going to like school you know so right absolutely so then and i just went to culinary school and then i was pretty good at it and then i ended up dropping out to go on tour with my friend's metal band nice um yes and then and then and then my um my parents were like, well, when you graduate from college, you, you're you're like, we're not gonna pay for anything. Um, you're gonna have to like, you know, figure your shit out. Uh huh. And then and then I had to figure my shit out and get a job. And then I ended up just working at French uh, French Bistro. Uh huh. And then and then just kept on working in French restaurants and shit. And then working away. That's so cool, man. Um, and you mentioned metal bands. So, so you have a background in uh, what, what kind of music did you grow up like in the punk scene or in the metal scene? Yeah. Like, like no, what I, types of bands were you like into? Um, I grew up in like, uh, well, I grew up in a small board. I grew up in Fort Erie, which is a small border town. Yeah. To, on the Canadian side, and so across from us is the beautiful city of Buffalo, New York. Okay. So, so I grew up going to hardcore shows in Buffalo. Yeah. Grew up like basement shows and, um, you know, seeing bands, I guess, you know, some of the early bands, bands like, you know, um, like all the Victory Records stuff, um, you know, Earth Crisis and seeing Hatebreed and Buried Alive. Yeah. Um, you know, 
all that kind of stuff, like early Converge shows, um, a lot of, <clears throat> you know, metal. I was, I, I was more into hardcore, like in high school than anything, but I got into hardcore through, uh, you know, I feel like most kids either get into like hardcore, uh, either through metal or punk, like right. skate punk or some shit. And I never, because, you know, I never, I never, uh, I never really fucked with skate punk stuff. So I, I always like at a young age was always listening to like, um, you know, I really liked at a young age, I really liked like Pantera and Slayer right. yeah, and yeah. like, you know, I had a, a mixtape that my older brother gave me that had like Deicide and Obituary and yeah. all that kind of stuff on it. So I was a metal, like, you know, a little fat metal kid, um, you know, in like grade seven and eight and then kind of got into hardcore through that. Yeah. Um, did you, were you into like um, uh, the Dead Kennedys? I like, it's funny. Like I got into the Dead Kennedys like older. Like I, 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 I worked at this one restaurant called La Palette, which was like a very bohemian kind of yeah. alcohol, very alcohol and drug fueled, very like outsider uh, place run, run kind of by like this, like kind of modern day gypsy couple, Shemez and Maria. Yeah. And, and Shemez loved the Kennedys and, and, um, we listened to a lot of Dead Kennedys. Yeah. Uh, like in 2004. Right, uh, right. When I when I was working at um, La Palette. But yeah. Yeah, I, I always wonder about Jello and what he's been up to lately. And, I wonder uh, what Jello's up to. Yeah, is he is still it, That's what you're wondering? That's what you're. I, <laughs> yeah. Well, I had the drummer. Uh, that's a homie of mine. Uh, DH is a homie of mine. Oh, sick. And so I, I didn't want to ask too much because I know they had a. a a split. Yeah, they had a split. I feel like Jello of, has a lot of splits. Yeah, because of maybe I think it had to do with their music being used in like commercials and stuff. Yeah, it's not punk. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that they weren't they wanted to do it. He didn't want to do I don't know. I didn't want to ask about it, you know. But um yeah, let's go back because cause like um I was researching you, like how did you get involved with uh keep it Canada and Munchies? Oh, so, so my shit with Vice, the yeah, with um, Vice and stuff too. Yeah. How'd you link up with them? So Vice were just the homies back in the day. And it was like one of those things, like when Vice used to have like store, remember when Vice had stores? Yeah. So, so once again, like kind of like early 2000s, I was friends. The Vice store was across the street from a restaurant I worked at. And I oh, always no. used to go to all when Vice used to have parties and like Andrew WK would play or like yeah. all that kind of like early Vice shit. Yeah. Um, you know, even like the stuff Dave's doing like with thumbs up and shit. Yeah. And it, it, it's like all that early Vice stuff was happening. And, um, you know, it, it's just one of those things where I was friends with those guys in Canada. And, and then when they started doing food, um, you know, it was just like one of those natural things where we would hang out and party together. And then I was like, you guys are, you guys are like doing food. Like the first time I ever saw yeah. munchies, it was like, what, it was a date, like Chang, like when Chang went and got drunk, like the very first munchies, I think was like Dave going out and getting wasted. Right. Um, and I think like Sue Chan was on there too with him. And, um, you know, all of a sudden I was just like, man, this is so crazy. Like this, like chef's night out munchies thing is like, Vice is finally doing something with chefs and like with fucking food. And then, yeah. um, you know, uh, it just kind of was just like one of those things where it was just like the way that I was and the way that I looked at food and thought about food was kind of like this natural progression. And I was just like, yo, like, let's make this show about me going across Canada and yeah. fucking with farmers and, and doing some shit. And, and then it was kind of like an easy kind of thing, you know? So it just happened organically. You just happened to meet these these people and then yeah wow. honestly like it, it was just one of the like it's not like i went in and like pitched an idea well i i was pitching an idea but it was more of like you know we're getting you know it's like we were out getting drunk and doing drugs and partying yeah. and, and well, just what kind being of drugs like were you guys doing like hallucinogenics no oh. <laughs> i don't know maybe i i don't yeah I don't know, mostly pro i was probably just doing a lot of coke probably were you, were you kicking it with hamilton no, I, I didn't know Hamilton back then. I don't, I've never actually even met him, but. Oh, the, okay, uh, yeah, that, his stuff is trippy, man. Like all the stuff that he films. 
it's heavy it's yeah, like, like that that show is uh it's a it's a great show it's just yeah. like I, I don't know if i could mentally handle that <laughs> now did you like, like um during like your days um at, at, like you know like this quote-unquote college days were you were you experimenting with with drugs yeah yeah no. i would do i would do any drug I was just like a, like whatever, like a party guy, drug head, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was really open to doing, you know, um, I pretty much, I, I, I would do any drug that was put in front of me. Mm -hmm. That's, did, that's for sure. <laughs> did, you, did, did you dabble in uh, like hallucinogenics, like LSD? Yeah. Yeah. I used to do like, um, I did LSD a lot in high school. Yeah. I did a lot of, um, uh, a lot of mushrooms, a mm -hmm. lot, a lot, a lot of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a, like, I would just do that. I feel, I remember like one time we were on acid. I even talked about it on like one of my cooking shows. On, yeah, go on ahead. Episode. I love acid stories. Can you tell this, the LSD story? <laughs> well, we were just, um, my entire, and this is going to sound really funny, but I was like, I played lacrosse. Um, oh, you, you played lacrosse. I played lacrosse. <laughs> And so like my high school field lacrosse team yeah. was going to like a tournament and like pretty like our whole lacrosse team yeah. took acid on the way to the, the tournament. Yeah. And uh, we ended up doing really well. We you lost. Guys won the get, you guys won the championship? No, nah, we didn't win the, oh. we got to the semi, we went, we got to the semifinals of this like day, this like round robin. On acid. Saying? Yeah. And then, and then this one guy, Mike, who was this big dude, he was like a big scrapper dude. And we got in this like wild fight. Yeah. And, um, but it was just like one of those things. It's like, you know, it's one of those things where when you're on mushrooms or when you're on acid and when it like just clicks and yeah. you can do, you do things like supernaturally and, and, and like the sun's gleaming, you're sweating, you're hearing, you're breathing. So you're so focused sometimes. Yeah. And, and I think if you're just like, because it was like this unified trip between yep. all of us that it was like a success maybe. No, what but do you it mean was by like, unified? Was the, was there like uh like a collective telepathy going on? Well, it's just you're all out there playing a sport together and you're all tripping and you're just like yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it was it was it was something, man. It was like you know, it's a long time ago, but it, 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 it you know, it's like almost like what, 22 years, 22 yeah. years ago. So it's like which is a long fucking time, but yeah. Um, I had a very bad experience, uh, in college on acid. Uh, um, yeah. I, till, till this day, I can't listen to Portishead. It can happen. Uh, I, I saw dead what, what people. happened. Yeah, I, well, I saw <laughs> dead people in yeah. my dorm room bathroom. I, uh, there, um, I, it opened up another dimension, man. Yeah. And, um, my homie, uh, he, he ended up getting arrested. Yeah. Because uh, I told him there's demons in the bathroom. Yeah, there, as, there, as there was. There was. Yeah. Uh, well, I was taking a shit in the bathroom. and I On acid. I, shitting on acid. That yeah, well, good, I drank right? too much Sunny Delight. You know that orange beverage? <laughs> well, I drank too much Sunny Delight. And I was uh, just looking at the ground. And when I looked at the wall... I saw um, dead people like like melting like this. And yeah, they're, like, they're looking at me, and they they're look their expression was like, I can't. This guy, this this person can see us. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, they know that. I know that they could see me. You know? They were on to you. They knew yeah, they that you knew. Me. Yeah, they knew and that so, you knew. Yeah, and I knew, and I knew that it was like the lower astral. Um, I like to call it the lower astral in between dimensions, like the third and the fourth, maybe they're stuck in this lost purgatory dimension. But it had to do was Portishead, man. Portishead, that that trip hop, that fucking yeah, trip well, hop. Her voice was like, it, it was almost like a witch to me, man. Like she like yeah, opened like a, up a, that whole portal, man. Yeah, um, like was, a fucking siren, like a yeah, fucking, it was like, like a like, trippy um, siren. Song three strangers. It was, I think it's, it has this bass line in it. Boom. And you know, like those CD um, boom boxes, you could repeat the song. Over yeah, and it was over. just on, dude. Yeah, so it was kept repeating. And I Ugh. saw dead people and um, my homie, and I told him I ruined his trip. I, cause I was in there for like 30 minutes. Yes. And I told him, I go, 
he goes, hey, what are you doing in there? And I said, there's demons in him. And I pushed him in the bathroom. And then what did he do? Well, he ended up... Um, it How did he get the cops? Well, no, no, got- thank God the cops we, the cops got involved later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he ended up holding me and we ended up reading the Bible Yeah. in my dorm room. And he ended up like... It was almost like we were a couple or something. He was comforting me like I was his, like we were his, like- like a, like a newborn lamb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. and then, okay, so we didn't have water. So I no. needed water. There was a parched. drinking fountain. You were um, parched. Yeah, I was parched. There was a mm. drinking fountain near the uh, main, uh, the main office. Uh, this dorm was an old motel back in the day. So everything okay. was outside. Yeah, yeah. So when I went there, I like kind of got some air, came back to the room, knocked on the door, and he, mm, I swear hello. to God, he, the, a demon was like, he was possessed, or, like his eye was twitching like this. Mm, and he was like, mm. Where were you? You know? Where were you? So Get he back ended, here. Yeah. <laughs> so he ended up leaving um, and going on camp. Well, he actually, uh, it was winter break, but there was uh, campus buses that like right. frequented the, um, the outer regions of the campus. I love that. <laughs> yeah, and so he ended up getting on one of the buses and grabbing um, a girl's arm. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And they called that wanna... in. <laughs> and yeah. he ended up running, uh, there's a thing called, a uh, place called the SRC, the Student Rec Center. It's like the um, mm. 24 hour fitness, you know, like- Where you get uh, buffed up. You yeah, get to get buffed, buffed up. up. He was uh, on campus there. Five cops apprehended him. Good, as they should have. He was and, a menace. Yeah, <laughs> and so he ended up getting- um. Locked out. Straight jacketed. You know, uh, yeah, like a stretcher board. On a table? Board. Like, you know, those stretcher boards? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't know this was going on, Maddie. I like that. So it's I'm like still- acid. Acid's like the original bath salts, you know? Yeah. It can go sideways real quick. You know, you're chewing on somebody's face. You're grabbing an arm. Yeah. You know? and you, It can go yeah, fast. It just goes dark real quick. So I ended up smoking a Newport and just, you know, I was just smoking and just drinking my orange juice. And then I ended up laying on my back and Mm. guess what? What I saw on the ceiling. You saw the demons. The demons came. They're like, where'd you go? We haven't seen you in a couple minutes. (laughs) Did you think, did you think we were, you, you thought we weren't real? Let me give you a heads up. We're real and we're here with you. We're not leaving. We're yep. not going to leave. Yep. We're going to be with you for a while now, okay? Yeah. They yeah. were looking down at me now. Yeah. Hello. And so I'm looking at Hello, them. Stevie. Yeah. And so that was mo- that was probably one of the worst trips I've ever had. Yeah, that's not a good trip. Sometimes, one time I was on mushrooms. Yeah, go ahead. And I was on mushrooms and I was sitting on the beach with my buddy. It's like, you know... Sun's kind of coming up. Is that the end of like, you know, those summer days where you just party and drink all day, all oh, night. Yeah. And you're, there's just like two of you left. There's like empty beer bottles all over. Yeah. And you're like, and you decide to eat mushrooms at like 4 a.m. And, and so you just, you're like, fuck, I got a couple grams of mushrooms. Yeah. yeah there's, there's nothing left kind of thing. So we just take them and we're both just sitting there in the sand and the water's coming in and we're looking, we're looking over and we can see all the lights uh, from Buffalo. We're yeah. right across from Buffalo. So we see all the city lights over in Buffalo and we're sitting there and the water is just going. And we're, I'm just sitting there like caught, like my body's completely exhausted. I've been partying for like 24 hours. Yeah. And I'm just, and I'm just like tripping. And I'm just like, the whole world is just saying, eat the sand, eat the sand. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like, and I look at to my buddy and my buddy's Jesse. I look and he's like, how's the sand? And that is, I was just like, is it telling you to eat the sand? And he's oh. just like, I think we like the water's telling us both to eat this. It was like, it was actually like, we both were like, eat the same like i don't know what the fuck happened wow and 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 we ended up like freaking out because we we're like we can't eat the sand yeah 
And we both kind of were like, it's time to just go home. So we ended up just going, like walking home through the woods for like five hours home. Now, like, have you ever seen like ghosts or anything on it? Okay. I not, dude, you want to hear something crazy? Yeah. I, I am. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Ghosts and stuff is something that like, I'm like, I don't, I don't say no to anything. I think everything, maybe there's a possibility of anything. Right. Yeah. My, my wife, my wife, my wife's house is this old old house and she has always said that there's like spirits and stuff in her house her sisters say it like everyone like they they all grew up in this old old victorian house and it's on the water and it's this old or you know whatever it's a big beautiful old house yes creep creepy as fuck you know it's old and me and Trish get home. We're kind of buzzed. Like me and my wife have been together for since high school. So yeah. like, we're like, whatever we come home and her mom is usually like in the living room, like, you know, literally like sewing or doing something at nighttime, waiting for Trisha to come home and, or us to come home. And it's not like super late. It's like midnight kind of thing. And, and we get in and there's like, literally she's usually in the living room. There's the living room. Then there's like the dining room and then the kitchen and then like the kind of the foyer where you like walk in. Yeah. And we walk in and somebody asks us like, how's your night? And me and Trish start, both of us start talking to this person that asked both of us like how our night was. And we both like take our shoes off and then we start walking towards to go talk to her mom that we thought asked us both that we both answer and started talking to see that we got me more because you both you both saw it dude and she'll say like and 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 we both were just kind of like what the fuck like your mom like i was just like are you are we both crazy and she's like no like somebody literally like a woman asked us both like how was your night honey like it was like a thing was it an older lady Dude, it was like her mom's like in her, it, her mom would have been in her 60s then. Yeah. It was so, and then Trisha's had multiple kind of like weird um, instances like that. Like one time she was home all alone and called me and being like, there's literally a bunch of kids like running around downstairs. And, I, and, and she's like, come, she's like, come pick me up. Like there's fucking people in my house. Nobody's home. I'm up in the attic and yeah. I can hear kids running around that i would be so out of there dude but but i know a method i'm discovering a method i haven't done it yet maddie but have you heard of evp evp no talk to me it's um this thing i've been listening to uh, old art bell podcast you know he used to have a show called um coast to coast you know alien abductions paranormal shit you know okay let's go evp is um voice recordings like spirit voices yes they could capture these voices on old recorders Mm. and so i'll send you the link after but these these people they'd go to mausoleums they'd go to old retirement homes and Dude, i'm telling you they would really capture like voices they're scary stuff they're dude one time okay you know when you're in high school and you're in fucking like audio video class and you get to make stupid little videos oh yeah and, those are the best yeah it's the best it's the best yeah. me me and my friends used to have this thing called we called our crew like the fun dummies yeah and we used to do like stu- you know it was like around that jackass a like everyone just running around oh, yeah. punching, you know just like driving in your cars in the snow banks and like smashing shit, shit. Yeah, yeah just like smashing shit and and we were making a video and there's this once again we're like we're on the river across from like buffalo new york so there's literally a lot of houses that have tunnels that went under the fucking river for the underground railroad. Nope. And, and there's this old house called the, there's this old house literally called the Dollhouse Museum. And it's this old colonial home. Nope. And it's got a giant brick cut out tunnel in the basement right in front of the river. And it's a museum and it's filled with dolls. No, thank you. And we went in to do a documentary about yeah. the how, and everyone says that it is haunted. 
And it's like straight out of fucking like Blair Witch. We go and shoot in this fucking house. We go down into the basement, shoot down in the basement and we get spooked out and we freak ourselves out. We're like, whatever, like 16 year old kids. Yeah. Freak out, run out of the basement because they allowed us to go down into the basement. We Why run out did you back. do that? Why? And it was so scary. Then we went back and looked at the footage. The footage static the entire time we were in the basement and the red lights on and it, it like staticed out and we couldn't even shoot in the basement. Yeah, I don't Once know again, why. I'm like, why would you even do that? We're just the first we're, doll I saw, I'd be like, I'm out. <laughs> the dolls weren't scary, but it, it was just like it was just spooky. And I think there's a lot of those spooky things. Like, I, I think it's like, you can't explain anything. Who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter. I don't know if there's parallel universes. I don't know if there's ghosts. I don't know anything. I'm just saying some of these things happen. What, I, what, what scares me is what if when we die, mm. we go there? Mm. Just in and, between the walls. Yeah, yeah. What if when we die, there's there like there is no heaven and you just go to this Kind I don't think there's a heaven. Area. Yeah, I think I think I think the gray area, the sunken place. You know, we just yeah. go down, like the, sunken, the sunken place. place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And I think when you dream, you're actually in that world too. Oh, for Maybe. sure. You know, that's the yeah, world you live. Sure. That's so the real you world. Had dreams where you're kind of, it's kind of like Earth. And you're having like adventures and shit. Always. I Always, have like three right? brothers. Yeah, we're filled with trauma. Our brains yeah. are, you know, we're just stacked and broken. We're like a like an entire a, a, like humans. We're like an entire like shelf of like fine china, and it yeah. just gets broken. The shelves get broken every day, and we're the the broken pieces. That's us. Yeah. That's what we're made of every day. You know. Have you have you noticed this? Is there a thing like you know, like the movie The Matrix, where you know, like there's that portal, like the telephone booth is the portal. Yeah. Like, have you experienced that? Because I've had to go through different doors to get back to this uh, dimension. It's been a while for me to, to get into dimensions or portals, really, to be honest. But yeah. I think, it, 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 you know, I've been sober too long, maybe. But it, 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 it's um, one of those things that I think is, uh, you know, there's a why. Why not? That's, yeah. that's why. I, I'm just like, I'm like a why not guy. Like, why? I believe you. Like you yeah. tell me a ghost story. I'm like, yeah, sure. That happened. But what Ooh. of it? Like it does, like everyone's like, it's the same thing as like, all of a sudden we have all this evidence that there's aliens and everyone's like, okay, cool. Oh like, yeah. Let's, let's go. They've there's, done there's, been here. They've been here. Yeah. Oh, the, like that silver thing that's in Utah, but now it's in Romania. What's going on with that? Oh, like the monolith. Yeah. What's up with the monolith? What's going on everybody? <laughs> yeah. That's um, that really scared me. Watch. And it's like perfectly shaped. It's beautiful. It's a it's, perfect it, rectangle. No, let's get back. I'm sorry. I, I went off topic. I'm sorry. No, I didn't, no, I didn't, Stevie. I, that's okay. Um, as far as uh, uh, you're cooking, like what's the most satisfying thing about cooking and, and, and what you do? These are deep questions. Well, I'm sorry. I just, I wanted to kind of stick to some kind of script as far as, um, stick, stick to a script. It's good. Yeah. The, I think, I think, um, I think the best thing about cooking is, you know, you're, you're taking a little part of yourself and you're making something that hopefully you care about, um, that you enjoy doing and you're sharing that with somebody and hopefully that brings them joy and a little bit of happiness. Yeah. And that, that ripples and that person maybe will go do something nice for somebody else. Yeah. And I think, I think food can be truly a healing force. And I think that like, if I can give people good meals, which I think I've given over the years. And, you know, I always say like, if I can make somebody laugh a little bit and fill up their belly, those are the two best, you know, I, I can't, I can't suck everyone's dinkies and I can't, yeah. you know, have, I can't make everybody sexually happy. Yeah, but you know what I can do? I can make them laugh a little bit and, and, and make them and food. make them full. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. Now, what 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 inspired? Like, where do you get your inspiration from to to do all this? Like, to take care of people. The yeah, way well, that I what do? inspires or to you cook people? To cook and stuff. I think just everything. Like, I think it's just like the life. Growing up, my parents are very hospitable people. Like, my parents um, are like growing up. We had you know. Um, 
there's four or four siblings. Yeah. So it's just like, and, and we're all kind of very close age range. And mm -hmm. so it's just like, we had a lot of friends mm -hmm. and, um, growing up, my parents always had like pretty much like an open door policy. Yeah. So it was just like, we always, we were such a hub, um, for kind of just friendship and all that kind of stuff. And, and there was always, you know, it wasn't like always a lot of, um, you know, there's always food for people. And like, it was always like, um, you know, it was just, I grew up in a place that was, our, our house was like a hub and our house was like a meeting place. And yeah. It was like one of those places you didn't have to call to kind of come over because you always knew there was going to be a few people over. So you yeah. can just show up and just, you know, um, you know, smoke some weed, drink some beer, eat some food, hang yeah. out, you know, just like mobbing out. And my parents, because my parents were those people that were like, well, you might as well do it here then go yeah. out somewhere else. But I think it was just, um, you know, I think like having that kind of, um, you know, my parents were always such a positive kind of thing in my life. And always supported my inspiration i think really comes from like how my parents supported me you know yeah. and, and in the sense of like i wanted to listen to punk sure i wanted to paint my nails sure i wanted to dye my hair green when i was young sure you know my parents would always just be like yeah man like you want to be it like my parents always allowed me to be me and i think like that's the thing that i really want um you know, uh, I think the toughest thing in the world is to be yourself for some reason. Right, you know? right, and I, right. And I, I, I think like I can try to be myself through food. And I think that's why people kind of identify with that. Yeah. And, and, and that inspiration kind of comes from my, my upbringing and, and growing up, um, you know, kind of just middle class and knowing that like, we may not have everything we need that we want, yeah. but we got every, that we got everything that we need. And um, you know, kind of the more the merrier kind of thing. Right, right. What are what are their thoughts now of your success? Like, are they tripping out on you? Like, wow, I can't. Like when you yeah, they, when you're on all these shows and how you yeah, like I think they're just stoked. Like, they're just parents. They're just stoked. Like, you know, um, I don't know. I they're just you know they're proud. They're stoked parents. You know, I did right. it. You know, I did it. I figured out how to like make a job for myself. Right. You know, so they're, like they're a, proud. Yeah, like they're yeah. they're 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 sweet. I'm I'm uh, you know I'm stoked that I make them happy from doing what I love doing. You know. Awesome man, and um I want to uh because because we're th this thing kind of flew by because th these are forty five minutes, but I wanted to personally okay. ask about your tattoos like. When, when did you start getting into tattoo? Cause I noticed you got a lot oh. of ink. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty, pretty covered. The, yeah. Um, what, what's the most painful part? Like, cause I only have a couple on my arm. Like, does that, oh. what, what's pain? What's the most painful think, part? Like my oh, palm. Wow. Does like, that hurt? The palms are fucked. The palms so it's are just fucked? like, the palms are fucked. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. Like, just imagine taking like a pencil and touching your, like your hand just instantly wants to like close. Yeah. And it's such a, like a, a, I don't know. It's like a weird thing. Like, it's just like a, it, like, I don't know. It's fucked. Like when I tattooed my palms, it was fucked. Oh, so you and tattooed I, your palms? No, not me personally. My buddy yeah. Chad did oh, this. Oh, when you got friend, it done. Yeah. yeah. My friend Alex did that. But I, I think it, it's just, um, yeah, I think it was just like it's fucked. <laughs> like what about this one your was, knuckles? How does that feel on your knuckles? Um, this hurts. This is it. It's like some places are your ribs. Your ribs are fucked. What about your, your ribs, neck? Your neck isn't that bad because your it neck isn't? is like such. No, it's actually not that bad because it's like it's really tight skin actually. Yeah. So your neck isn't that bad. Like on, for me, um, my whole head is done too. But oh, it is. Like you can see a little bit here. Okay. Did that hurt right there too? Like right by. Yeah, that was crazy. Like my whole entire skull is done. Yeah. But it's like the, um, the, the head's fucked. The head yeah. is fucked. But I honestly think like the palms, like I'm lucky that it only takes like this only took like 10 minutes, but uh -huh. it's like, it was excruciating pain that like something like, it was like, that was like actual torture. I felt like if you were like to fuck somebody up like that, I was like, it's not a nice experience. Where are you not tattooed? Like, are there, is there any more room My, left for the tattoos? Um, I got like one butt cheek left. I got like <laughs> the little backs of my thighs. 
Yeah. I got a l- I got some on this side, but like yeah. most of my like my body, my back, my neck, all my arms. I'm Is pretty. The back I'm pretty... of your neck tattooed? The back, like right here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you got that too? Yeah, I got a little cancer. Did 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 that hurt your the back of your neck? Yeah, that was out of the neck. The front doesn't really hurt, actually. Yeah. I thought. Well, it does hurt. I shouldn't say it doesn't. All tattoos fucking hurt. Yeah. But um. I'm pretty good with with it, but also as you get older, it's the word. Like I don't, I can't get tattooed longer than like an hour now. Right, right. And I used to be able before I could get tattooed for like four or five, six hours and yeah. be like, yeah, I got my sleeve done in like six hours and yeah, I sat yeah, there yeah. and I'm like, yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's just it, it's kind of like the long the long gone are the days of me even acting tough. But right. it's like, um, yeah, getting tattooed just as whack. It now, as far as like, how, do you still have memories of, uh, do you go to the same place to get your tattoos or have you gone a- across the world to get tattooed? Um, I've been lucky and I've gotten tattooed a lot of places by a lot of great people and a lot of my friends and mm-hmm. it's all, you know, New York and LA and, you know, all over Canada and a lot of places in the States. And, you know, I've been lucky to, now I don't like getting tattooed. I don't like getting, I only like getting tattooed by like my friends now, just because it's right. just like, it's annoying. I don't want to sit there and get tattooed by somebody I don't know. You right. Know? I'm just old and all, I'm old. And like the only spots I have left are very painful spots, obviously. Like as you paint, paint yourself into the corner of, yeah. cause I'm trying to cover my entire body. So it's yeah. just like, it's, it's, I only have like super painful spots left. So I don't want somebody I don't know really doing that. Cause that's annoying. So it, what, what, how do you, how do you know what to get tattooed? Like, do you just, is it randomly you'll pick like a flash tat or, or do yeah, you, I think, well, some, some, yeah. Like, I think it's just like some places make sense. Some places don't like some styles, you know, um, you know, I have some meaningful tattoos and like a lot of them are like, they're more meaningful because of like the time and the place and like who you were with. And I can kind of remember some, most of my tattoos I I got when I was really fucked up. So a lot of the tattoos, there's some stuff where I'm like, holy fuck. You don't remember? No, there's a lot of tattoos I got that I'm just like, I don't remember getting that. Wow. But I got them, but I got them, but it's still just like, um, you know, I don't fucking know. I don't really give too much rhyme or reason. I think the ones that you really try to think about are the ones that like end up being stupid years later. Right. Like, if you're like, oh, I got a panther. And you're like, yeah, panther's yeah, cool right, forever. Right. It's like, I got this thing that me and my friends went on a trip and like my buddy fell off a cliff and then he right. he lived, the, but he lived. If you have to explain your tattoo, I feel it's kind of whack. It's yeah. like, it should just be like, oh, that's a sick tattoo, you know? Yeah, right, right. All right, so we're, we're, we're kind of, that that because these are 45 minutes i wanted to take this time to maybe plug and uh if you have a website or um, oh all your social media I, I maybe you could uh um yeah you could check yeah. out yeah you can check out i got a podcast you got to come on our podcast yeah i would love I, to i would love to i got a podcast called powerful truth angels with two-tone okay. um what's it, that about like What's nothing it? jack shit oh, i was just, trying to figure out talking yeah about homies? okay yeah yeah it's just about jack shit yeah um and i got check out the powerful truth angels that's it really just check out the pod i got a bunch of other bullshit but who gives a fuck what about uh, the stuff on uh the you, your, your cooking shows like munchies you, you can go on my not well that's all so you can check out if you just type my name into youtube you'll have like hundreds of videos of me cooking so if you yeah. want to check that out check yeah. that out that's cool um if you want to buy some cookbooks you can buy i got two cookbooks out um buy two cookbooks if you want or whatever yeah um, but yeah whatever oh um, chill. Uh, do you have any advice for people who just want to make a better food in their their little apartments or like is it all about the spices it's all about the spices. I always say it, it, it's you're the missing ingredient. You know, I think I just, I think the je ne sais quoi or, you know, like the, the, you, you're the ultimate, uh, you're the ultimate spice, you know, and right. it, it's about, and it's about understanding. I, I say it's very, it's about salt, fat, and acid. Okay. Right. If you can, if you, if you can balance salt, fat, and acid, you're going to be in a really great place. You know, that's with every dish. 
With every dish, it should be balanced. It should have enough salt, enough fat, and enough acid. And there you will be able to have a delicious dish. Not, 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 not like pepper or, or, or sugar, right? No, that stuff can happen. But as long as you have a balanced salt, fat, and acid, and you yeah. add your little sprinkles of whatever else you want to add, yeah. but all, all of your components should align and be balanced with salt, fat, and acid. Right, right. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. That's fair and enough. And fat, fat can be olive oil, butter, fucking, you know, whatever the fuck it is. But it's just like, you know, it's not fat, fat. I'm not saying like literally like fat. I'm just saying like, you know, oils and stuff like that. So as long as you can have your, you know, like making a vinaigrette or some bullshit. Yeah. You know, no, you want to like make sure it's not all rice. oil. What can you do with just a regular bowl of rice? That's to a perfect, that, that. isn't that perfect? Yeah. That's isn't the bowl that, of rice right? just... I think so. Like, a, how great is just a perfectly steamed bowl of rice? Just a steamed bowl of rice. Okay, that's fair enough. Don't you think? Like, is it yeah, steaming I think rice? So. I think Isn't so. that enough? Yeah. That's like, I, I think it's more about just like I think I think a, a beautiful bowl of rice is, is just worth cooking it properly. You yeah, know? just getting a good steam. I think rice. that's hard enough for most fucking people. <laughs> right, right, right. Man, I appreciate your time. Is there anything? Um, can we plug your um your Instagram and a website or anything you want to plug? Um, I got like a merch store called Matty Matheson dot store. Yeah. Check okay. that out. If you want some merch, we're going to have, be having drops, a lot of drops for all of December. And, yeah. uh, hey, can you say the website IG, again? Can you give out the website? Matty Matheson dot store. Okay. okay. Dot store. Okay. Dot store. Check okay. that out. And my IG is just Matty Matheson. Dude. Thank you so much for your time. And, um, Next time, if you end up in Hawaii, hopefully I'll get to meet you in person. You know, I have- You live in Hawaii? No, no, but like, let's say, cause oh. he, Pat's the homie, right? So if Pat like, yeah. you know, like- Let's get it. Where do you live? Are you in LA? Yeah, I'm in LA. I'm in LA. Okay. But um, we, we I, do uh, our podcast. We do our podcast in Los Feliz. Oh, okay. That's that's right down the, yeah, I, get, I get there in like 10 minutes. Sick. Let's get it. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Maddie. Um, I um, right now you you you're actually free to go. I'm just gonna stay on to just do some announcements and everything. You do some announcements. Dude, thank, thank you for you having so me for showing up. I appreciate you. you thank too, you. Buddy. Okay, we'll man. See you soon. All right, Later. Peace. Okay, that was um Maddie Matheson, and so I wanted to I wanted to um give some shout outs. Hold up. I think they're back here. Okay. So, um, that was awesome, by the way, just, just, uh, me, he, that was really, he was a really friendly guy. Um, I, we do have a Patreon uh, attached to the show. If uh, the newest patrons this week are Gilbert Marquez and James Briscoe, if you want to uh, join the Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. The YouTube is www.youtube.com slash Stevie Weeby. Uh, we're almost to 100K. Help us get there, folks. Tell a friend, okay? Um, my Instagram's Instagram slash Q U A N G O U. Um, I'm almost done with my concept album. I'm eight songs in, so I I think I'm gonna just leave it at ten songs. Um, and so I'm working on that every uh, every night. I'm writing and I'm doing the beats for that. Uh, there's a new there's a, there our latest music videos at uh, youtubecom slash Weeby, The pod in which we travel. That song is on my band camp, which is stbweebybandcamp.com. Definitely, if you want to uh, check out any, any of my music, go there. Um, what else? Uh, stbweebyshow.com is where you could get the um, merch. If, uh, just know that uh, the, the, the orders may be a little delayed because of the uh, COVID, the quarantine and everything. Um, we do have a P.O. box. If you want to send any of your packages, send your packages to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. 
and with that being said um yeah that was short and sweet i really enjoyed that one um subscribe today to my youtube and thanks for checking out the um Maddie Matheson uh, interview. I'm, I'm doubling it up today. So um, I'm actually, I got to get ready for the next one, uh, which is uh, Michael Yo there. So um, yeah, thanks for uh, checking in. All right, peace.